Welcome to Speed News Sunday. I'm Bob Varsha. We begin tonight's show without our usual fanfare in view of the tragic accident that took place in the warm-up for Sunday's Indy Racing League season opener at Homestead Miami Speedway. An accident that began with a spin by Ed Carpenter and wound up taking the life of Paul Dana. The 30-year-old Dana, a St. Louis resident and current Indianapolis uh, resident, excuse me, St. Louis native, was returning to the IndyCar Series with the Ray Hall Letterman team following rehab of back injuries suffered in a crash in practice for last year's Indy 500 while driving for Hemelgarn Racing. In the opening minutes of the session, Carpenter, screen right, lost control in turn two and backed into the outside wall. As his damaged car slid down the track, five cars managed to avoid him. But Dana, the sixth car on the scene, hit the back of Carpenter's car at high speed. Rescue teams went to work, and both drivers were airlifted to Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami. Carpenter was not seriously hurt, but doctors were unable to save Dana. Later, IRL President Brian Barnhart and team owner Bobby Rahal addressed the media. The number 20 car driven by Ed Carpenter and the number 17 car driven by Paul Dana uh, that occurred approximately 10.03 this morning shortly after the beginning of the practice. Both drivers were removed from their cars and flown to Jackson Memorial Hospital where shortly before noon Paul Dana was pronounced dead from the injuries he suffered in the accident. Very black day uh, for us uh, and on behalf of all of our team, David, our sponsors and associates, our prayers and sympathies certainly go out to Paul his wife Tanya and the whole Dana family. This is a great tragedy. As a result, uh, and in honor of him, we will not be running, competing with cars 15 and 16 today. Now, as you heard, Bobby Rahal withdrew his team's other cars for drivers Danica Patrick, last year's Rookie of the Year, and 2004 Indy 500 champion Buddy Rice, who had qualified third and sixth, respectively. Paul Dana's wife, Tanya, was notified of her husband's death while attending a church service in Indianapolis. Dana was involved in racing before getting behind the wheel. He graduated from Northwestern University's School of Journalism and covered motorsports. Dana also worked in public relations and marketing while pursuing his passion for speed. Paul Dana's driving career began in 1996 with stints at the Bridgestone Racing School and Skip Barber Formula One Dodge Program. In 2001, he competed in the USF 2000 National Championship Series for card owner Jerry Forsyth, posting two top five and four top ten finishes. The St. Louis native debuted in the IRL Indy Pro Series in 2003, recording six top ten finishes in ten starts in his rookie season. 2004 was a breakthrough year for Paul Dana as he picked up a ride with team owners Ron Hemelgarn and Roger Johnson. He claimed his first Indy Pro Series victory on the Milwaukee Mile on his way to a runner-up finish in the championship standings. Dana graduated to the Indy Car Series with Hemelgarn last year and finished 10th in the season opener at Homestead Miami Speedway. However, he suffered a broken back in a crash while practicing at Indianapolis Motor Speedway in May. The injury sidelined him for 2005. He returned in 06 with high hopes, joining Ray Hall Letterman Racing and testing well at Homestead in early March. And here's a look at Dana's accomplishments in his brief Indy Racing League career, which includes three starts in the IndyCar Series. Because of his abbreviated season in 2005, he was eligible for Rookie of the Year honors in 06. And for more insight, let's go to Speed's Robin Miller, who can talk about Dana and the accident that killed him. Robin? Oh, well, I, I think what everybody was worried is is it, this whole thing happened uh, it was this you know two minutes into the practice session there's cold tires Eddie Carpenter crashes I, I think the thing that concerned everybody was eight seconds went by and then Paul ran into Ed's car you know going 176 miles an hour according to the telemetry and I think we've heard all these theories well did his spotter tell him what was going on and and everybody said from the officials of the IRL to the officials of Rahal Letterman there was no problem with communication so we're not really sure if he didn't hear it, you could at least see the yellow light was on, and there's a yellow light in your cockpit that comes on to alert you that there's a yellow on the track. Uh, Robin, you've been outspoken about drivers getting into Indy cars a lot easier these days than, than in past years, and obviously a lot of talk has been about Paul Dana uh, wanting to prove this season to, to you personally and to a lot of people that he belonged. Now, you put those things hand-to-hand, -hand, it begs the question, do, are these guys have enough seat time? 
Well, what's happened is is it's become too easy to get an Indy car license or a Champ car license. Either, both series has had people in the last 20 years that didn't have the credentials, that didn't have the experience. And it's not that Paul didn't have the desire and the passion to do it. He certainly went through a big, long rehab last year after he hurt his back in Indy. I saw him in the gym a lot this winter. He, had, he certainly had the spirit to do it. But to run these cars at 200 miles an hour this close to each other for two hours, uh, you can't learn that in a year and a half or two years or running small formulas. And he did r run the Pro Series, but it just it's become too easy to get to the step that they're at right now to jump into the Indy 500. And I think that's that should be the concern from both sanctioning bodies. Robin, you mentioned the eight seconds. We had a view with our cameras aboard Scott Sharp's car. You could hear him deaccelerate immediately. Uh, did you talk to Sharp and, and his thoughts as what he saw from his car? Well, Sharp was, uh, he was downshifting into, from second gear to first and really hard on the brakes, and he said he saw a flash go by him, and, and that was Paul Dana's car, and he just said he didn't know where he, he thought to himself, where is he going, and then he saw the explosion when he, when he ran in the back of him. I think the, the real fortunate thing here is, is that six inches more, we might have had a double fatality. I mean, it, it, because thankfully, it, for, for Eddie Carpenter's sake, he, it, it hit him far enough behind the, the, the driver's cockpit. But the sad part for Paul Dana was it hit him in, he hit it in the gearbox, and I think that's what, that's what caused his massive injuries. All right, thank you, Sue. We'll hear, we'll hear more from Robin Miller coming up later in this hour of Speed News, and we'll hear later from Robin on Wind Tunnel with Dave Despain. Now, Paul Dana died three weeks shy of his 31st birthday. Funeral plans have not been announced at this point.